people of Marvin. Um, my name is David. I'm a Christian preacher, and uh, I'm here today to uh, give you some good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Before I start, I'd like to give you a little bit of my uh, testimony. I was a bad boy for 22 years. Drink, soft drugs, women. In fact, my life was rebellious. I ended up with 13 near-death experiences, three drink drives and bar from 23 pubs. I'm now 21 years abstinent of alcohol and those things and married to my wife 11 years. I'm here today in Camarvin to preach the good news of the gospel. Now you've probably heard, many of you have probably heard people say, you must be born again. But really, to actually understand what that means to be born again, I'd like to read from the Bible today, John chapter 3, where Jesus actually spoke to a religious Pharisee who said to him he must be born again. John chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, in these verses, to be born again, let me just make a summary of this. First of all, in verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. First of all, this was a religious Pharisee of the day. He acknowledged that Jesus done the miracles, because no man has done these miracles, past, present, or future, except God be with him. He came to Jesus by night, and a lot of people said, I've said, you know, he came by night, and this is an act of cowardness. But I think this was because throughout the day, there was many multitudes of people around Jesus, and he really wanted to see him on his own. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, this is old English King James Bible. There's a lot of corrupt versions out there. In old English, verily, verily means urgently, urgently. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. To be born again means to have a new heart. It says in Ezekiel 36, 26, that God will give you a new heart and a new spirit. Well, 21 years ago, God gave me a new heart and a new spirit after three drink drives, apart from 22 pubs, and 13 near-death experiences, and now 21 years totally absent and clean of alcohol and those vices. In the book of Romans, Paul speaks about being alive from the dead to be born again. 2 Corinthians 5.17, the Bible says, You're a new creature, a new creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And Peter, Peter says to be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, to have a new heart, to have a new spirit. 
John says to be passed from death onto life. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except he that heareth my word and believe upon him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. To have a new heart, to have a new spirit, to turn from our un unrighteousness to righteousness, to turn from unbelief to belief. To be a changed person from the inside out. Now in verse 3 or 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now Nicodemus here was thinking of the natural, a physical birth, the natural birth. And we all had a natural birth. Eight billion people, all of us come into the world. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, urgently, urgently, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. And that which is born of flesh is flesh. That's the first birth. Eight billion people, we all come into the world. Our mother's water is broken, and we all come in of a physical birth. Jesus said, the end of this verse, and that which is born is spirit, the spirit 21 years ago. When I repented of my bedroom and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I'm not in an organized religion. Religion can't save anyone. Baptism can't save anyone. We're only saved when we repent and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. In that bedroom 21 years ago, when I repented, with tears coming down my eyes, God gave me a new heart. Give me a new spirit called the Holy Spirit. He changed me from the inside out. God will give you a new heart and a new spirit to be born again. Ten out of ten people die. Death happens because we have sinned against God. And what is sin? A lot of people ask, what is sin? Well, sin is transgression of God's holy law, an act of rebellion against Him. To violate the laws of God is to sin against God. God's going to judge everyone by the same standard, not by man's standard. Religion, religious works and rights, He's going to judge everyone by the Ten Commandments, His standard. It says in Romans 3.10 that for all of sin that come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. God will judge the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. That's what his word says. And in the book of Psalms it says that the wicked will be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. That's pretty serious. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Now God's going to judge sin. What is sin? Have you ever told a lie, the Ninth Commandment? If you've lied, what does that make you? A liar. The Eighth Commandment says that if you've stole anything in your life, took something out and not give it back, then that's stealing, that's theft. God's going to judge our thoughts, our words, and our actions. It's appointed unto man once to die and after the judgment. Times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now command of all men everywhere to repent, because you have appointed a day in which you will judge the world in righteousness. Revelation 21 it says, But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So God's going to judge righteously. Now, God doesn't want, that's not God's will for us to end up in this eternal prison, a place called hell. Hitler, Stalin, pedophiles, rapists, murderers. If they do that to our family, we want justice. We want them to go there, but God's not going to stop there. He's going to go with the lying, the, the, the stealing, the blasphemy. He's going to go with His commandments, His standard, not religion. Religion divides and separates people. In fact, religion can't save you. Baptism can't save you. 
Religious works and rights can't save you. You're only saved when you put your faith and trust. Repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. So how can God let guilty people like us into heaven? But God commanded his love towards us. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And on that cross, Jesus, we broke the law here on earth. Jesus paid our fine. If you're in a court of law, you got speed and fines, a hundred thousand pounds. You got no money. You're standing before the judge. You're going to prison. And someone walks in off the street and they pay your fine, a hundred thousand pounds. You're grateful. You're free to go. Well, that's what Jesus done on that cross over 2,000 years ago. He paid your fine through his life's blood. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is one name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. That's why Jesus said, as I read earlier in John 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again with a new heart and a new spirit. So chuck the the same chapter in verse 16 and you probably heard this scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life for God so loved the world there's the provision he provided a savior Jesus Christ Jesus of Nazareth the son of God the Messiah that he gave his only begotten son. That's the provision he provided away. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No Jesus, no heaven. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He's given everyone the chance to have eternal life without suffering, without pain, no tears, complete exceeding joy, or eternal life in his eternal prison, a place called hell, for pedophiles, rapists, murderers, blasphemers, adulterers, he's not going to stop there, he's going to go with the lying, the stealing, he's going to go with the thought life, our thoughts, words, and deeds. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. We're like a moth to the flame. The sins of the flesh, the carnal, the carnal ways, we're attracted to what feels good, what's pleasurable. And that's sin in God's eyes. In the bounds of marriage, it's, it's okay in God's eyes. But outside of marriage, it's fornication. So as I come before you today, I urge the people of Carmarthen to repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And the moment you do, you'll be born again with a new heart and a new spirit. I was a wretched sinner for 22 years, drink drugs and women. I ended up with... 13 near-death experiences, three drink drives and barred from 23 pubs. I lost my job three times, banned off the road eight and a half years. I'm probably worse than what every single person here is. But God have mercy upon this wretched sinner. I'm 22 years totally absent of alcohol. 22 years of soft drugs, 18 years of smoking. You give me a wife of 11 years which I did not deserve. And he changed my heart from the inside out. I'm not perfect, I don't have all the answers, but I know that the moment we repent and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, God will keep his promise and he will give you a clean heart and a clean spirit. He'll change you from the inside out. You'll be born again. You'll be a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It says in Matthew 16, 26, what shall it be? Profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There's nothing this world can give you. It's all temporal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away, Jesus said. You must be born again. The book of Hebrews says, It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. Ten out of ten people will die. 
that's appointed unto them once today. So I urge the people of Camarthen today to get right with your Creator. Before you put your head on the pillow tonight, think about what I've said to you today. If you've got any questions, you're very welcome to come over and ask. And if I can answer those questions according to the Word of God and according to my testimony and my lifestyle, past, then of course, present and future, I'll try to answer them for you. So thank you for listening to me today and uh, may God bless you all.